make sense of this contradiction. I don't know who these people are. What is Pac? I can't get Pac. He's, he's talking about Brenda's got a baby on one hand, and he's talking about he, he's getting around. This dude, I don't know, his music is crap. I don't get it. Right? So then you just, you sort of, you, you tidy them up in a nice little box and you say, well, you know, that's, that's urban culture and only they understand, right? Like, insofar as you, there really isn't any logic to be had, it's just, you know, we'll allow them to entertain themselves. No, there's something really profound there, right? So that's a really bootleg version, a really ghetto version of trying to, trying to make sense of what's going on here, but, I mean, that's the best that I've got, right? You know, um, so that the subject, the subject is... Um, essentially divided. What Again, she says, Marx is obliged to construct models of a divided and dislocated subject whose parts are not continuous or coherent with each other. A celebrated passage like the description of capitalism in uh, Foist's Master brings this home vividly. Right. So the subject for Marx is divided. Right? The subject for Marx is divided and profoundly divided, dislocated and profoundly dislocated, and this dislocation serves as the condition for the possibility, serves as the antecedent cause for the consequence, my subjectivity, right? Two totally different models. Now we understand, right? So when we're talking about subjectivity, we don't want to equivocate in our use of the term subjectivity either, so let's not equivocate on oppression, let's not equivocate on subjectivity, because when we're talking about subjectivity, are you talking about subjectivity in this sort of traditional model, this post-French structuralist model, or are you talking about subjectivity in sort of this Marxist, dislocated, um, disunified uh, subject sense? My interpretation, and I think it's right, interpret I'm almost positive it's right, is that Spivak is saying, I'm on this team, and we're arguing against this team. And um, whether or not she's saying Deleuze and uh, Foucault are sort of on another team doesn't really matter. It's just, you know, I had to bring that up because. Uh, you can't really understand this unless you understand who she's, to whom she's talking to. All right, so the next equivocation that we can have, right, and again, the equivocation like the word that, right? If you're constructing an argument and you're using the term subjectivity, but you're using the term loosely, sometimes you're using it like this, sometimes you're using it like that, well, your argument is going to have a problem, just like a bat is used to hit, a mammal is used to hit a ball, right? You have to be consistent in your use of the terms. You can't have equivocations in your logic or else your logic collapses. And talking about subaltern press, don't think that they're interchangeable. They're not. Okay. The next thing that um, scholars equivocate on all the time is the use of the term representation. All right. Representation. And this is very, very important for Spivak. Not, I mean, all of these, actually. You can't really understand anything unless you understand that she does not want us to equivocate on these three points. There are probably other points, but for me, these are the three essential points that we have to recognize prior to even um, really reading uh, Spivak's Ken Subaltern speak, right? So, two forms, and I have to waste some of this stuff. So, da, 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 where am I? Representation. All right, so two forms. This is going to be the new number five. So this is number five. Um, two forms of representation. Again, it's not that one form is better or worse than the other, that an understanding of subaltern is better or worse than an understanding of oppression, that the French post-structuralist account of subjectivity is any better or worse than the Marxist interpretation of subjectivity. It's just that it's a different account. Don't interchange them as though they were one and the same concept because they're not, and you're doing sloppy, you're doing sloppy argumentation. Your logic's going to end up being all skewed if you don't if you don't uh, uh, take account of that. So, the first form of representation is. The first form of representation is representation as V-E-R-T-R-E-T-E-N. Vertreten, I guess. I don't know how to speak German, but that word. Okay. So representation as that, right? Um, and the reason why she uses the, the German is because she wanted to delineate differences in the use of representation. A lot of this ends up, hap what ends up happening is in... Uh, 
in translations, in fairness to other scholars, and, and Givak, Spivak is being uh, charitable, but in fairness to other scholars, what ends up happening is you translate a text, and insofar as the text is translation, uh, translated, you see words, two different words that both can be translated as representation. You translate the word as representation for both, but the, the distinction in the use of two different words is lost. So what ends up happening is, is scholars go back to the text and say, hey, did he really mean representation in that sort of conflated sense in both? And then, you know, we, we sort of uh, get to the root of this distinction. So um, in the first sense of representation, we, we mean in, in the idea of political representation, right? Political. We mean in the form of political representation. The example that I want to give is um, representational democracy. Within our, because I think everybody, everybody in the United States knows this, right? And it's very, very easy. And I think it, it speaks to the, the distinction that Spivak is attempting to make, right? So, in a representational democracy, when I use the term represent, right, and actually, now that I think about it, have I done a philosophy of hip-hop represent? I don't think I've done, <laughs> um, I don't think I've done represent, I'm going to do represent, because we say that a lot in hip-hop, oh, that's stupid, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go ape on that, um, yeah, in hip-hop, wow, that would be crazy, do like a, a, a Spivakian Marxist account of representation. Yeah, hip hop, we talk about representing a lot. That just hit me like a brick. You gotta pardon me, I gotta take, write that down so I don't forget. Um, uh, uh, represent in hip hop. Represent in hip hop. Yeah, I'm gonna add to my philosophy of hip hop series, uh, represent. That's, that's, that's tough. Um, okay, so anyway, sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, too far. <laughs> Two forms of representation. The first form of representation is political representation, right? So, um, a representational democracy, right? In a representational democracy, it is the case that our representatives should represent us, literally embodied representation. There's a, a, many other ways we can take it deep, but I don't want to get deep right now. I'm a black man, I want a black guy in office, right? He doesn't have to be the president, but I want a black guy to vote. Right? He should represent me because he, insofar as he's a black guy with similar education, blah, 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 what have you, from the ghetto, what have you, cliche crap, he understands what it's like. He can empathize. He understands, with, he understands what it's like to be me. He knows what it's like to have to struggle to get to where I'm at. So he's going to make sure that when laws are passed and that you know, policies are enacted and blah, 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 that when he's at the table, and sort of this sort of uh, Rawls's sort of theory of justice, this veil of ignorance, he's going to think about me, right? Well, he, he, you know, who could I be? I, well, I am the black guy, right? So it's like, um, I could be him. Let me take that guy into consideration when I go to the table to make my decisions, right? So he represents me. In Tampa, I used to live in Tampa for a while, while I, while I was for many, many years. I love Tampa. I miss Tampa. But um, I used to live in Tampa for a while, and... Um, um, we had, I think in St. Pete, the first transgender, and obviously you guys know I've, I've published on transgender theory, but we had the first transgender mayor, I think it was, in St. Pete or something like that. And as soon as they found out that she, who was a he before, as soon as they found out that she was a man and she was running for, you know, they, they, you know everybody went in uproar and blah, 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 because they were thinking, you don't represent me. But there's people in the community, there's transgenders in the community. I was like, dude, we want... So a transgender representative, right? We want somebody who understands what it's like to be transgender in, in the hegemonic power, right? To, to make sure that that power is curtailed when it comes to deciding on factors that affect us, right? The movie Milk is about sort of representation and how um, the first um, openly gay um, political representative was elected to office, right? Represent, right? So represent us, right? We want you to represent us. Um, and hip-hop, which I'll get into later, you know, like Jay, Jay-Z's, he's, he's, he's representing me. He's doing, he's doing a good job. All right. So representation and sort of political representation. That's, that's the first form of representation, right? The next is representation, right? Representation in this form, Dar Stalin. Dar Stalin. Don't know how to forgive me if I my German. My German. I know my German's bad because I don't have German. 
um, so representation in